Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build your own gem. So this was actually suggested by a viewer on my last video. So I'll put the comment right here somewhere so you can see that. And this just goes to show that whatever you comment, I will probably build because I'm really trying to get new ideas for apps to build. So please give me comments on what to do next and that'll help me create more videos. All right, so he wanted to know, he wanted to watch the whole process of me walking you through how to build your first gem. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. The gem that I'm gonna build is actually just gonna use this API. So I thought this would be pretty easy to understand because uh, this is an API to get the current time from anywhere in the world. So you just make a request to the API and then you include the area and then it'll give you back what time it is there. So to test out this API first, before we even start writing any Ruby code, I just wanna test this to make sure it works. So for that, I'm gonna use this tool called Postman. It's a really cool app that'll let you test out APIs and make requests to them. So I already have it installed, so I'm just gonna open it up. Well, if you don't have anything, it'll usually start like look like this. And we can just press this plus button right here to create a new request. And then we'll put the URL. And then we can just press send. And now, if you look at what we get back, it's just a whole list of different locations that we can use. So this is really cool. And then from here, we could make a request to... Okay, so it looks like you just add it onto the end of the URL, whatever location you want and then it should give us back the time. So if we change the URL and include this time, let's send the request. And then just like that, it returns all this data, uh, which includes the time and everything. So this is really cool and super simple to understand. Now let's get into the process of turning this into a gem. So to do that, let's just open up our code editor. So I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code Editor. And then we're gonna to need to create a new folder. So I'm just gonna click on file and then open folder. And I'm gonna go choose where I wanna have my code, create a new folder. And I'm gonna call this, um, call it world time gem. And I'll select the folder. Now inside of here is where we're gonna put all the code for our gem. So a gem usually has a gem spec file, which is where you'll add all the configuration and description about the gem. So let's just do that real quick. Uh, we're gonna wanna think about what we're gonna call it actually, and it needs to be unique when we publish it. So I'm just gonna quickly go to Ruby gems and I'm gonna see if there's already one called world time, there probably is, yeah. They will we'll call it ours world time Ruby. That sounds good. So I'll create the new file. I'm just gonna call it World Time Ruby. Gemspec. Which really, I don't think this this name actually matters because what does matter is when we set the name inside of this specification. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add this code for the specification of the gem, and then we're gonna add all the details. Let's start with the name, and then this is what needs to be unique. So this file could really be called whatever, but you just have to make sure that the name is unique when you're pushing it. And then next we can set the version, which usually in gems you use uh, versions. So whenever you make a change after you published the gem, if you make a new change to the code, you'll want to increment the version each time you release, just so that your users uh, know which version they're using and it's not affecting the code. All right, then we're gonna add our summary. Ruby gives the current time of where in the world. And then we're also gonna do a description, which can basically just be the same thing as the summary. And we'll put the authors. So this would be uh, whatever you wanna, whoever you wanna credit for the gem. So I'm just gonna put tutorials 
and then an email is the same thing if you want to put uh, your email mm, I'm just gonna put a uh, sample email that's not even my real email although I should get that now you are going to include all the files that we're gonna have in our gem so usually you'll put your files inside of a lib folder and then we're probably just gonna have a class or we're gonna have a file called world time the RB and then the home page would be the link to your gem once you publish it which right now we haven't published it yet but it will be world time Ruby so we'll just set that it's the home page and then for the license uh, it really depends on whatever license you're gonna go for but the, the default one is MIT which means like, other people can use it all right and then from there we have the, the configuration set up for our gem. Everything looks good here. And now what it's going to do is it's going to include this file. So we need to quickly create that. So I'm going to create a lib folder. And then inside of there, I'll create this Ruby file that I called world time. And inside of here, I'll just create a class called world time. And then I'll just create a method called how about first let's do the just the time zones so like we did in postman to return all of these time zones we can add a method to return those so i'm going to also add this uh, constant up here at the top of the class which i'm going to set to the url of the api and then uh, i'm going to freeze it by doing dot freeze now this is important for constants because it makes an actual constant because in Ruby you can uh, override this constant in the code on accident but if you freeze it then it becomes an actual constant where you can't change this all right and now we have the URL of the API we're gonna need a library to make the request so for that I'm gonna use net HTTP which is already included in Ruby so we can just require net HTTP up at the top. And then inside of the world time class, we can make the request. What we're going to do is we're going to get the response of the request from net HTTP get response and then we're going to need to convert our URL to a URI so we'll just say URI and then we'll pass in the world time URL and then from there oh, let's just I think it'll already return this by default so now to try this out we can just test this out like any Ruby file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this in the console. So I'm gonna go over here in the console and then we're gonna figure out what I called this. Okay, I called it world time gem. So I'm gonna CD into world time gem and then CD into the lib folder. Now inside of here, I'm just gonna run our Ruby file by saying Ruby and then passing that file in. Now nothing really happened, so I guess to get it to print out, let's print out the response by doing puts response. And then now I'll go and try that again. Uh, so still nothing really happened. Oh, because right here we have the class defined, but we're never actually calling it. So we if we want that to get executed when we run the file, we just need to call it at the bottom of the file. Let's say world time dot time zones and then now this will execute that code and then if we run our file again you'll see what we get in the console is this is class from net http so we're not actually printing any uh, information right now it's just printing the class but if we wanted to get the body of the request we just have to say dot body now we can go and try that again and you'll see that we get this whole body Back and it's actually already in an array 
Now, another way that we can actually open up this file inside of a Ruby console is to use IRB. So you can say IRB R and then add the path to our Ruby file. And now we've opened up a Ruby console where it's already required this file. And then if we say about time, we have that class available. And then we can call time zones and get all of these time zones, which actually now that we look at it uh, in the console, we'll see that this is actually a string. But if we wanted to turn it to JSON, could do json.parse. Although it doesn't know about JSON. So let's actually exit out of here. Let's go back into the code and then we're going to require JSON at the top. And then we can go back into IRB. And actually another way we can just require the file in IRB manually. And that should also do the same thing. Maybe we need dot slash. Yeah, see. So that actually does the same thing. And then we can also call time zones. Uh, oh, and then I want to do json.parse. Let's see what we get. Okay, now we get a nicely formatted JSON response. So let's do that by default inside of our code for time zones. We'll exit out. Now if we go back in, make sure to require that file. Now we can call time zones and we get a nice formatted list of all the time zones. This is cool. Now if we want to implement the method of get time <laughs> or what we call it <laughs> current time for area call it that or how about we call it like get current time and then we'll pass in the area okay and then now to do this we're gonna basically have the same code as the time zones except for we're going to change this URL so we're actually just going to have, I'll make a method called URL with, or I'll make a variable called URL with area, and then I'll set this to constant plus uh, the area. You see, I'm adding a slash. All right. And then we're going to pass this in right here. And then now this should actually get the current time back. I don't know what happened. All right. So I'm going to do the one, I'm going to do IRB with the dash R option. So it auto requires, although, oh, <laughs> you have to include the dot slash though for it to actually work. All right. And now we're in the IRB. We'll have the class if I call time zones, get this. If I call get current time, we actually get an issue because it's expecting an argument and we didn't pass any, we actually have to pass just any one of these options from up here. So if I pass in this, Africa Legos, call it, and it gives me back all of this information. This is already really cool. And then really like the, the thing that we need most is like the date time right here. We'd wanna display this in like a pretty format. So we could say is the body equals JSON parts body. And then we're just going to get the date time and then we can actually use the date time class in Ruby we can do that by requiring date at the top of our folder and then we can do date time dot parse and pass in our date time I don't know. Can I call it date if I'm requiring date? I think I can. I'll just call it D just in case. Um, and then we could literally just do D dot surf time, pass in whatever surf time we feel is appropriate, and then it'll return us a nicely formatted time. So now if I go exit out of that shell and just reload it, now if I get the current time, it actually gives me a nicely formatted time. And wow, I didn't know that. So in Africa Legos, it's actually 10.39 p.m. Who knew?
So let's see. We could probably like improve this a lot because yeah, like it's hard to really tell right now. So let's add an option to search. Actually, that'd be cool to so the time zones. So let's add like a search option, which can be nil. So just like that, we can have an option of search, which defaults to nil. And now what we can do is we can say if search, we're gonna return like a special. Um, we're gonna search the body basically. So say if search body dot and click in filter undefined oh because i was trying to do javascript <laughs> something like this that's how you do it in ruby i'm gonna search all right cool now it gives me all of the ones for africa search America and really like <clears throat> it's actually pretty good maybe they have Miami no Florida Texas I think American time zones we could look through here and see what they have. So it's just basically like the biggest cities. Uh, Los Angeles, they have. Okay. And I'm getting the current time. Just have to pass one of these options in. Now we can get the current time of it. Yeah, that's cool. It's just a really simple little gem. It's not even like there's still a lot I would want to do to improve it. But this is just a good example and it's pretty simple to understand. So then now that we have our gem actually completed and we're happy with it. Uh, we can get to building it. So to do that, we're going to want to go and open up our gem in the console. So I'm just going to go into their gem. And now we're going to be on the main folder because we're going to need to run a command gem build. And then we're going to pass in the name of our gem spec file. And then we run it. It looks like, oh, undefined method description. So I, I had a little typo in the gem spec missing s all right let's go back and let's build the gem so now we've built our first gem and then from here uh to push it up to ruby gems first you actually need to go make an account so if you don't already have an account you have to go and sign up for an account in ruby gems now i already have an account all right now that i have that password reset i'm gonna do gem sign in now i can use my username and then we'll put the name of the key. And then I don't want to customize scopes, so I'm just gonna say no. And then just like that, it says signed in with the API key. And then now from there, all we have to do to release our gem is just push this gem uh, bundle that we created. We do that by saying gem push, and then put the path to that compiled gem. And we're gonna push the gem. It says the existing key doesn't have access Please sign in to update access. Okay. We're gonna make us put in our credentials again. Now it's gonna add the scope. All right, now it's successfully registered gem, World Time Ruby. So just like that, you created your first gem. So congratulations. Now if we go and search it up in the search bar, we actually see that the gem that was, that didn't exist before, now exists, World Time Ruby. Just like that, authors, Indigo Tech Tutorials, and it was just released today. So that's how you can do it. Now I'm gonna show you how, how you can actually use it in your Rails app, just so we can test it out real quick. So let's create a new Rails app by typing Rails new. And then we're gonna call it, just test the world time gem. 
I'll do Postgres, Tailwind, all that stuff. And I'm going to run that. It's going to create the app for us. And now we can just CD into that app. I'm going to create the database by doing RailsDB create. And then I'm actually going to generate a quick pages controller or for a home page. So I'm going to do a page controller with a home action. Generate that. And then I'm going to quickly edit the routes to RB. And I'm going to change up this route to go to the pages and the home action. All right, quick start the server with bin dev. Oh, refresh. And then now uh, we're on the home page. So just like that, we have everything set up. And now if I'm going to add the gem, I'm just going to go in the console, run bundle add, world time Ruby. And it's going to fetch our gem. We have the world time Ruby gem. And then now if we wanted to just say like display all the available time zones on this page, we could do that. So I'm going to use VS code. I'm going to open our new app that we created. Now I'm going to go into the app views pages and the home page. And then we can just literally use our class, the world time uh, time zones and just print this out directly on the page. Reload. And oh, we actually get uninitialized constant world time. So that's because we do have the gem, but to use it, we'd have to require it. Um, so yeah, requiring it, we actually can do that right in the gem file. See how there's the require option. Uh, let's just get on here. <laughs> require true. I think just like that, it should be good if we restart. Oh, we're getting an error. Cannot load such file. World time Ruby. Oh, I see. So it's trying to find the same file as like the. It's trying to find a matching file for this, but we called it world time to RB instead. So I wonder, can we pass like an actual file name to this? I think it, we can. All right, now let's reload. Okay, we reload and now it works. So I didn't really like how we had to do that. That doesn't, that's never happened to me before in a, in a gem. So how can we make it auto require? Oh, I think it already auto requires the gem, but because the name is different, it actually like breaks. Hmm. That's kind of annoying. So we have to require world time to RB. Uh, even though it's world time Ruby. So we should be able to just fix this by going back to the code for our gem. And then just renaming the file, right? From world time, world time Ruby RB. Then going to the gem spec and updating the files that we're including to actually include world time ruby to rb and i'll quickly test this out too so from the ubuntu console um, go to the world time gem the lib folder and i'm gonna do irb include Oh, well now it's world time Ruby, and I just want to check if it works. Can we still get the world time class? Yes, we can. So everything works. So now we're actually going to uh, build the new gem. So before you do this, make sure that you uh, also update the version. So we're going to go to 0.0.1. .1. And 
then we can do gem build on the gem spec right here and then just push that new file that was generated now it's going to push the new version of our gem all right perfect so now this should have fixed that issue if we go back to our rails app test the world time gem well actually uh, we need to update our gem, so I think we can just run bundle update and it should automatically find the new version. So we're running bundle update. Hmm, I'm not really sure. I didn't see anything get updated, so let's go into the code. Oh, I see, because see, we're kind of explicitly pointing to 0, 0, 0, but let's point it to 0, 0, 1. And I'll go and rerun bundle. And now we can see it actually installed the new version. And now we should be able to just restart the server. And then go, we reload. And now everything's working. We didn't have to require anything. So it's just as we expected. All right, now one way that we could kind of clean this up is, well, I do want to display all of the different time zone options, but I kind of want to like put it into a select box just so it's a little bit easier and it, it holds it all into one little box. <clears throat> so I should be able to just feed this right into a select tag, just like that. And then we'd have to uh, do another method called options for select. And then we'd pass in this array of options. Now we reload, we don't see anything. But I think we actually need to Make this array to include an index too. I think we just have to say like map dot. Index. <clears throat> and then we just return time and then index. So this will create the type of uh, array that they're looking for, which I think, well, it's not really working. So let's check out options for select real quick. Um, you're supposed to be able to put in an array like this. Which I thought that's what I was doing. Like this, but let's try to print this out separately. And quickly comment that and just print this right out on the page so we can see what that looks like mm. so it is doing the two-sided array so the options for select i think it was working but i think we needed to put a name too so we need to put like the name that we have so time zones and then we should be able to pass in the options for select all right and now we have all these options and then we kind of like select one. And I think actually from here, it should be easy enough. Like we could take this and then why don't we just make a form that has a submit button that returns the time. So let's turn this into a form. So I'll just do form with URL. And we just go to slash time. We're going to say do f, and then I'm actually going to change it from select tag to f dot select tag. I think it's actually, is it just f dot select? And then we can do f dot submit. If we reload, uh, we'll see the button. That doesn't really look that great. So I can change the text on it by saying, and say, get turns current time and then I'll add some styling all right and now we would be able to click and then get the current time but we need to quickly set up this slash time route in the controller 
So I'm going to start by going to the config routes.rb and I'm going to add this path. So it's going to be a post slash time, which will go to time controller and let's do create action. Now we're going to have to create that controller and the controllers create a time controller.rb. This is going to have a time controller class that inherits from the application controller. And then this is going to have a create action where we're going to use our gem to get the current time based off the param time zone. So I'm actually going to change this from time zones to time zone. And then we would get the, the time. And then I would want to just, <laughs> well, actually we can use turbo for this. Uh, so let's turbo stream. Let's just have like a div right here with ID time. And we'll, just, we'll set out with a default thing, like select the time to show. All right, and that's going to be the, the div that we're updating. So then when we select our time, get current time, it'll update this. Uh, so to do that, we'll go in the time controller. Let's just set this to say time equals this. And we're just going to render turbo stream turbo. And this is going to be a turbo stream update. So we're going to update the content. Uh, we're going to go after the time and then we're going to pass in HTML. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you have to do target time and then HTML would be the time. But let's check this out. I actually haven't done very much hot wire in a second. Funnily enough, because I just haven't really needed it. Click get current time. Oh, it looks like we got uh, no complicit. Oh, <clears throat> whoops. So actually see how I was doing that to I was doing that array where we were setting to the index. Actually, we wanted to just we don't even care about the index. Actually, we just want to map it and then have like our time also be the time. So like this is the name and then this is the value for the option. It's kind of confusing, but then it would actually have the right time zone. You see time zone is this. And then now oh, we're getting wrong number of arguments given zero expected one to two. So I actually think yeah, I don't think you have to do the target. I think you just pass in the actual target name like that. If I get current time, just like that, you'll see uh, it's able to get this. This is pretty cool. After all this work, I'm actually pretty happy with this. Uh, let's see St. John's. What time is it there? 7 p.m. So for me, it's 5 p.m. That's not even that far off. Uh, Indiana. It's 5 p.m. Oh, it's the same time as me there. Cool. So yeah, this is a really cool uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You learned a lot. And now you're able to build your own gem and then see how you can use it in your apps. You've learned a little bit of the tricks and things that you have to look out for when it comes to like naming it and the files and everything. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I wanna do a lot of more videos like this where I build more gems and I create even more helpful apps. Uh, thank you.